Hello, everybody. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 4 of Beacon 147. Today is June 5th, 2014. We've got a special guest with us tonight, which we'll be talking about right after we get the show started. Hello, everybody. My name is Thomas, and joining me tonight, we have a special guest all the way at the end, Mr. Ken Shadow. And as always, we have our co-hosts, Brandon and Bobby, or our Bobby and guest, for those of you that are <laughs> following along on our featured thing. Well, so my speaking, name tag's going to read. Yeah, so speaking of guest, uh, I definitely want to give a shout out to the folks at uh, RSI for mentioning us in the recent fan spotlight, which was a couple weeks ago. And uh, it was really cool. So we definitely appreciate that, guys. So um, that being said, let me get the appropriate lower third up. Let's go ahead and start talking about the news. So um, some, nothing major really happened this week. No, I, it's been so quiet from Yeah, yeah it really has. So um, I guess I guess we can talk about some of that stuff. Uh, first off, Spaceman's parking lot, as we affectionately referred to it as, and one in which our wonderful co-guest tonight joined uh, used to frequent, is no more. Wingman's hangar is Dunsky. It is a and sad, sad day. It yes. is. It really is. Um, let's kind of talk a little bit about what our opinions were of Wingman's hangar. Um, first off, I loved it back when it was in the basement it was much more casual it didn't feel like a corporate entity it felt like a group of guys that were passionate about the game making the game you know and kind of bringing us along for the ride uh when we hit when we hit that stretch goal and then about eight months later when they moved over to the new studio i kind of felt like it started to go a little bit downhill i personally loved hazy thoughts I loved the more f- the, the the fan videos. I loved Wingman's Wait. I loved the nose cam. We didn't really have any of that anymore, and that that was kind of my disappointment with where the show went. But well, when I, I think, think of classic Wingman's Hangar, I'm thinking back when they were in the basement. The grassroots, like you know, community driven stuff is where it started, and yeah, and it, you know, it's kind of where really all of the stuff was born from. Um, you know, I think CIG has a bit of um, schizophrenia or um, multiple personality disorder or, or just growing pains, you know, about how, how they want to present themselves. Right. And so, yeah. it, you know, it, it, it and, you know, there's multiple, uh, multiple ways that you can go about this. Right. And some people have different opinions about how to do that. And, you know, I think that's a lot of what they're trying to roll. They're trying to find happy mediums and stuff like that. And, and that's where it's kind of where it goes though. Well, and the way it changed, too, it felt like the evolution of how much they were being put in the news. It was no longer a Kickstarter campaign. It was no longer a community thing. They were having to show that they were serious as a company. And I think that's where We Men started to change was when they started to have to put that corporate hat on and make it look like they were serious. Yeah, I think they, they really wanted to keep, you know, they, they wanted to keep it professional, but... They also wanted to appeal to the fans, you know, and kind of try to connect with them a little, a little better. And it was kind of a an odd mix towards the end. But I don't know. It's kind of kind of sad to see it go. Well, I mean, we we I mean, I think we all even even with the little quirks that it kind of grew at the end. I think we all loved it. I mean, it was it was a great show. And um, they are. I think they're going to be switching into more of what they're doing with Ten for the Chairman and. Um, uh, the next great starship, which we'll cover in a little bit, much more produced, much more professional looking. Which I mean, you really can't complain that they're that they are going to be taking that that route. Uh, Mike Moreland, who used to do all the production work behind the scenes, he recently launched a um, Kickstarter campaign uh, for not Kickstarter, a Patreon campaign for uh, his new show, and that's going to be focused a lot more on the fan and the community type stuff. So uh, galactic inquiry. Yeah, and, and uh, Ben Ben's show, uh, or you know, it's we start starting as Ben show the uh, around the verse kind of thing. And, uh, the way he he pitches that is he wants to get again back to the community roots too. So That's awesome. I think, I think we're going to have multiple shows out there, you know, both inside and outside of CIG, showing uh, a wide plethora of you know fan contributed content and uh you know universe building stuff and i'm, I'm really excited about that um, yeah check out uh, uh 
Mike's stuff on the Patreon. He put up a cool teaser video and an intro thing. And um, I think they're already, I saw a note from Ben that they're already filming the Around the Vat verse today or something like that. Or, you know, the week before in order to, in order to um, um, stretch their legs and get it, get it done. So speaking of uh, the newer shows, are you still going to be putting on some uh, custom fan content yeah. on these shows? Yeah, I have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, cool. I've got I've got four kids, and uh, they end up holding the <laughs> camera and the special effects and stuff like that. Yeah, and and so we we all have a lot of fun making the videos. And so, so I, um, so I mean, and also like you know, just for a variety of other fan stuff, we just did a charity video for there's a a fan named uh, Arashis. And his wife has a uh, liver disease, and so in order to kind of help him out, he has a uh, you know a fun drive. You know, he's trying to get some some um, transplant money or whatever it is. Uh, we put together, we made a whole like seven minutes like mini movie thing with like a whole bunch of the fans got together, and then um, kind of a you know a message, kind of a somewhat message, and so. You know, personally, I'm hoping to get involved in all sorts of other fan activities, both videos and, and whatever else. Very, very cool. Um, so, the, the I guess the next Can big we, thing is going to be... You need to add CIG, so... Oh, I think I might have... I think Brandon might be lagging a little bit. I'm, I apologize if that's on my side. Yeah, there was um, kind of a pause there, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, kind of going forward, the next the next thing is the next great starship. The season finale uh, it starts Saturday. It'll be a live event at the YouTube Makerspace in Los Angeles. I know Brandon and myself are going to be going. Bobby, you're not going. Are you going to be heading up there, Conchetto? No, no. I unfortunately can't make it out to to LA for that. I, I'm I might try and make it to Sitcon or whatever they call it um, in LA later this year, but uh, I can't won't be going to the next great starship thing. Yeah. So, uh, or do you have any favorites? I know we've kind of talked about it amongst ourselves, what our favorites are. What, what about you? What are, do you have any favorites? Any, any, anybody you're pulling for? Not, not at the end. I think they're both competent entries, and I like them both. Um, I, I loved, um, I, I guess I have a problem with the definition of gunship, but I loved the... Uh, I completely lost audio on him. Do you guys have him? Nope. nope. So what, okay. or can you see oh, we, yeah, we, we could see you. We lost your audio. Can you, can you repeat that for us again? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. So I was saying I, I love the Infinite Shoe Monkeys interior, and uh, mm -hmm. I was kind of rooting for them for a little while, but um, they didn't really fit the gunship you know, description per se, but it was so cool on the inside. Um, but out of, out of the last two, I both I think it was Four Horsemen and Shard Collective, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're both really good ships. Um. One of the things that I loved, and, and I can't remember the name offhand, I love asymmetric ship designs, and I just don't feel like we have enough asymmetric ships in Star no. Citizen. So so that was a, a little bit of my disappointment, is I would love to see some more asymmetric ships. Uh, but beyond that, you're exactly right. The, the the two ships that are remaining in the competition are so high quality, and it's, it's, it's going to be hard to make that choice of which one do I really want in the game. I want them all in the game. I think they, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they all had really unique qualities, and what was the really name awesome. of the asymmetric ship again? It was um, uh, gosh, I knew you would Cryo? ask. Team Cryo, Team Cryo, <laughs> Team Cryo. Right? Yeah. yeah, that was. I, I I was a little bummed when he got knocked out. You know, I, I knew it's one guy. He's probably not going to be able to keep up at some point, and he kind of um, he got knocked out there. But I I I really liked some of his earlier designs there with the the whole sword and the shield thing. You know, I'd like yeah. to see more of that direction in the in you know in the universe when they make new ships. Yep. So let's go ahead and talk about, I guess, the the other teeny tiny bit of news, Arena Commander. So we called it. We called it. We uh, we knew, I knew, or I had a feeling in my gut that we would not get Arena Commander until June. And true to my gut, we got it, and it is fantastic for the most part. What are your guys' opinion of it so far? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stayed up all night waiting for it to download. <laughs> I mean, um, I'm guilty. <laughs> yeah. I, I've had a lot of fun with it. I spent uh, a good number of hours, I guess, yesterday playing it. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm as quite as far as some people, but I've been trying a variety of things out rather than trying to get as far as I can. But, uh, yeah. 
It's really pretty. It, it's and it is. It's gorgeous. Um, here, here are a couple of the things that I think are not as good as I would like them to be. I bought the X52 Pro Hotas setup for this. I was I was gung ho, full speed ahead back in February when they said we were going to get it in you know February March. So I was all excited for it. Loved it. It's been sitting here collecting dust. Tried to play it with Kerbal. Not going to talk about that. And um, <laughs> so, uh, so, <laughs> so I so I get super excited. Plug in my X52. Download all night long. Um, the hangar module. Go to work. Sitting at work the whole time. Just counting the minutes down. Come home. Fire it up. And I immediately go, "What the hell am I doing? This is not working." <laughs> at all for me. I mean, I'm trying so, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm flying the Hornet and I'm trying to fire both of my weapons sim- simultaneously. And I'm like having to, I, I can't even uh, describe. Grow extra fingers. Yeah, I can't even describe <laughs> the positions that my hands are in trying to make both of my turrets fire, fire simultaneously and then getting a, a, a missile lock. Like it was, it, I, maybe, maybe I'm just incapable of doing that. Um, so, 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 okay, so I think I mentioned this kind of in a pre-discussion. So, you know, Hunter Carr said that you know, everything's been made gimbal in order to balance out the power of some of these weapons, right? Right. So I have a, fe- I have a feeling because of that, if you want to be effective on a HOTAS and Star Citizen, you know, for these nimble fighters, not the big things, but for the nimble fighters, um, you're either going to have to be a fixed weapon um, vehicle like the Scythe, you know, it has really powerful weapons where you don't have to hit every once in a while in order to win um, Mm -hmm. or you have to have head tracking in order to keep up with the aiming of the smaller fighters Mm -hmm. so uh, you know oculus rift or track ir or something like that so brandon how were you playing what what were what was your how did you end up going with it well i i originally started off with the x52 just like you did um but i noticed that there was a small area of fire that you that it would fire out of it would gimbal in, in a certain degree of functionality there to hit a target and while that was interesting when i started using the mouse and keyboard it could use the entire screen so it feels kind of imbalanced as far as that goes and i really think that uh, the discussions that are going on in the forums about that discussion about how people want to be nerfed and others don't is really uh, very cattywampus because you got people who want to not have something nerfed just because they like to be overpowered. They don't want to see it nerfed. And quite frankly, I think what I expected was for the game to be buggy and, you know, almost unplayable, but it's playable. But yet I feel like the balance issues are the biggest focus. And that's what CIG needs to go from here on out with. It, it's it's nice that it's so stable that we can have balanced discussions all Exactly. Yes. That's true. So, Bobby, how did you end up playing it? All right. So, I tried my $20 joystick. Very quickly decided <laughs> no. I tried the Xbox controller. Had some minor success. Then went keyboard and mouse and said, oh, yeah, this is me all the way. Um, but I didn't like how I couldn't maneuver as well. It's kind of weird, um, but I, I did pretty well, pretty well. Went keyboard and mouse in the Vandal Swarm, got to wave eight or nine, something like that, and did pretty decent. But um, I think my my biggest concern, or not really concern, uh, it was actually kind of funny. I I have the Legionnaire Aurora, and it's got mounts on the top for guns as well. And we only got the the normal Aurora, and I tried removing the missile launcher off the top and putting a gun on the top, and it didn't put the gun like up on the on the the mount. It put it down, so it was going <laughs> through the cockpit, and I couldn't get in the ship. And, I don't know. It was it was kind of interesting, but I, I, that was really to tell you the truth. As far as like actual visual bugs go. That was really the only one that I saw. I mean, other than, you know, minor flight glitches and stuff like that. So but I've, I've heard several people complaining about that you get you run into some interesting bugs when swapping out some of those mounts. And yeah. uh, uh, on the Hornet, if you swap out the chain guns, mm-hmm. I don't know what I, I don't know what the specific combination is, but if you actually if you go back and put them back, they stop 
having ammunition. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you need to have to delete your user folder and a variety of things like that. So you kind of have to be careful with what you swap out on those things. Wow. Yeah, now, now Alpha's Alpha, so the bugs are going to be there. Um, perhaps for me, the most frustrating bug I have had is SLI. Um, I cannot get SLI to work stably with that game. I'm constantly having to play in windowed mode or disabling SLI through NVIDIA control panel. Uh, because I get the the huge shard graphical glitches where you know I'll be flying around, there'll be just a pink glass wall in my face, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, but that's I mean that's to be expected. It's it's early engine things like that. Um, as far as game breaking bugs, other than that, none. It's it's I've had some con connectivity issues keeping staying stably connected to the server. Um, now the other issue I've had, and I was streaming last night for some of the people in our gaming community kind of showcasing some of the some of just how beautiful it was because this is the first opportunity for them to actually see ships flying about and firing not without a you know the uh, RSI uh, magic wand touch making everything look super pretty and um, I, I love how I would get into the uh, Aurora in particular and as my character was sitting down in third person mode his head was outside of the cockpit sometimes nice. <laughs> and he, he was like too far to the left or too far to the right in the cockpit and I was like yeah that doesn't seem to be very um, nice, but uh, I, that I relaunched and that went away. Have you guys had the connection lost issues? Constantly. Yes. When, you're, when you're flying Constantly. and it just says connection lost, but you could still keep playing just fine. Um, yeah. My my big problem is trying to get into the game. Like you you, you launch the launcher and then you try and launch the uh, the actual game and it says connection lost and, and then it closes. And well, it's just. I don't, Let's just see if that happens like to me. Because <laughs> I have been trying feverishly as well to get in. So let me uh, re-log here. Yeah, I, I had uh, that happen once so far. Yeah. I, I've had the connection loss thing pop up to me uh, two or three times, but it never actually kicked me out. It was just connection loss. But hey, keep going. You know, if you want. <laughs> you know. But it's I, I'm actually seeing the issue that he's seeing that that um, Ken Chad was seeing. It's once you get to the point where you hit the you know launch game button. Yeah, is where you're getting the connection lost issue. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my so. problem happened right when I knew it was going to load right into the hangar, and then all of a sudden connection lost, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Once it's in, once you're inside, it doesn't it doesn't matter. But yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I, I wonder if it does matter for people that are actually in the multiplayer dogfighting. Yeah, so do we know yet about how many people are in it? Because I know people that are in the 7,000s, not 70,000s, the 7,000s who are not yet in multiplayer. Um, I asked Wingman the other day because he was on the subscriber chat and doing a, like a hangover or whatever, mm -hmm. and he said that they couldn't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, my guess is it's is it's under a thousand is my is my guess because I think we I think it's somebody in one of my my guilds is uh, like two thousand or something like that and he he he's not in it so it's oh. it's hundreds of people not thousands and yeah. if it you know and I, I'm 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 twenty thousand or something like that so I'll hopefully be in it you know not too horribly long but um, yeah it's not very many people at all. Yeah, and I just tried, and I got the wonderful connection failed right during load screen. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is what it is. So I'm sure I'm sure it'll you know beta's beta or alpha's alpha. It's not even in beta. So I mean, we can't you know, be too many harsh on them. We were wanting to go into the module, and I'm go I'm glad they're starting small. Yeah. Um, I guess the com how how do you feel that the community is responding to the module I, I i stayed up probably until about one uh one o'clock central time uh in the in the morning on thursday or i guess wednesday excuse me and people were getting pretty nasty in the chat mm -hmm. room i was really disappointed in how the community was handling it about uh, pre about the launch yeah about pre launch when they when there was not a lot of information out there and they were still you know, putting their ducks in a row, propagating the servers for download. And yeah. it I was this is the first time I was ashamed to be in the chat channel. I in fact closed oh. it quickly. I really, wow. I really, really, really don't understand some of these people. Like I, there was a there was this horrible um, you know, one of many posts in general chat where this guy was like, Oh, it's so horrible, this game isn't out yet, man. I I put 
$200 into this game, yada, 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 yada. And I'm like, what? You know, I, and I kind of click on his, on his thing. I'm like, when did this guy register? And he registered like three days ago, right? And he's all <laughs> mad. It's three days for the game, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> some people just, I, I don't understand the views here. You know, they yeah. don't understand anything about crowdfunding or like game, game development. Like, yeah. yeah. Or they don't research anything before they drop money in. And then they're, they're pissed when it's different from what they do. Yeah. Well, I think what really annoyed a lot of people, though, was that you had Ben on Twitter saying that there's <laughs> something he knows, but yet he's not telling anybody. And that was pissing off a little, pe a lot of people. And it really what it came down to was that they said they were going to have the meeting in the morning for the go, no go. Then several mm -hmm. hours later, they said it was a no go, no meeting had been delayed. And then they said nothing until up and until they released it. So I think yeah. it was just the fact there was no information. When so we so Ben has some some community um, interaction stuff, mm -hmm. and um, that he basically he basically said that meeting wasn't until like five p.m. or something like that or six p.m. Yeah, and so that you know it, it I think people. I think people got worked up a little bit about, you know, some of the things he said on there and kind of inferred things that probably weren't necessarily mm -hmm. true. I mean, they did say it was going to be in the morning. I don't know what, why it got delayed until the, you know, basically the evening, mm -hmm. but they did get it out that night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> credit to them. I mean, honestly, but the thing is that people got to be patient. They don't know what's happening. And I think they were just upset that they expected one thing and were getting silence and, and they and wanted to get something there and unfortunately i think there's probably going to be some ramifications behind all of this stuff and not Certainly. not good ramifications right i mean i think a lot of the developers you know i've seen a couple of them you know come on chat you know and talk about things and um you know wingman again with the hangover recently and it, it was very 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 evident these guys are putting their heart and souls and like not sleeping very much i mean like mm -hmm. Not just like one guy. I mean, like whole teams are not sleeping at all, right? Yeah. Or they're sleeping yeah. in the office or whatever it is. And then they go on the forums, you know, to answer questions and be involved. And it's like, you know, we need to get lawyers over to CIAG and stuff. I'm like, people, you're burning bridges. They're not going to talk to us as much if you keep <laughs> Right. This, yeah. Right? And, you know, and, and, coming, and coming from marketing, I do a lot of PR. And it's really difficult when you don't have good news and it's even more difficult when you can't say good news. So you know when you have that piece of information that you want to be able to say, but you can't because you don't want to jump the gun or you don't want to say something that eventually or you know may eventually turn out to be wrong. And I think that that's the situation that they were in, that they had every intent to make to, to put it live as soon as possible on Wednesday. But who knows? Maybe Chris was said, well, let's take a look at this. Let's let's double check a couple things. And, you know, I want to make sure when we release it that it's perfect or as perfect as it can be. But meanwhile, you've got this community that's expecting updates. What do you say? What can you say to appease a community of people that would that would make them happy? There's nothing. You could say, hey, well, we're I, working on it. And that's it. I think there are, there are the response, you know, that they ended up giving us, which was daily bug reports and showing mm -hmm. us where they were. I think that was the right response. I don't think they should have put a date to it at all. I, I think they should I think they just kind of told us, "Hey, we're here. This is where we are. You know, we'll let you know when we got a, when, we, when we have a final date. You know, but yeah. I don't. Um, I, but I think the other response where they started giving us more visibility instead of um, instead of pulling up a wall and you know soon kind of a thing. I think I think their response is what I want to see. I want to see more visibility into it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean that's why you know that's why I've backed. You know, I, I like like to see how the sausage is made here, right?" Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I think they could extend the title a little bit, even if they just said, "Hey, we're still working on this. We haven't forgot about you guys. We need a little bit more time." Even if it was a, a quick message on the uh, forum or a tweet from CIG, just something to kind of calm everybody down. I think that would have been a lot better than just no silence. So I think that is how they could go about it better next well, time. They, and they have that yeah, hold though, right? I mean, like immediately what after. was trying to do. I mean, he was saying, you know, hey guys, hold on, you know, possibly today and things like that. I think he was trying to keep everybody up to date. Um, I think people kind of got a little too excited about what he was saying though and, and, and took it a little bit more um, concrete than probably he meant it. Right. Yeah, they, they had that poll too, right? Where uh, like immediately after everything went live, they put a poll up saying, hey, 
do you want us to announce dates or internal dates or not? And unfortunately, I think the yeses were winning on that one. And they're going to, you know, yeah. we, we live in a society that loves to be spoiled. You know, mm, I, yep. the day a movie comes out or before a movie comes out, there are already reviews on the internet showcasing what happens in minute one to, to the ending credits. And yeah. so, so I think it's, I think that was a bit naive on their part to post that because the obvious answer is yes. But yeah, I, mean, I, I want dates, you know, I, I, want, too. I want CIG to like Skype me and say, Hey, Kim Shadow, the date is, you know, made, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, and then, uh, you know, not tell any of like all of like the four year old children that apparently get out there and like to make threads on general chat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like, like, but that's the one, that was the only point where I have been disappointed in this community. There have been times when I've disagreed with how the community's handled things. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the only time where I was like, oh God, I, I can't stay in chat anymore because this is embarrassing. I mean, this is really, really embarrassing. And I think you're exactly right that what this is, all this has done is now made them less likely to give information. Right. Because as soon as you say a date, as soon as you say even a target window, spring, summer, fall, if for whatever reason you can't deliver, and if it, regardless if the reason is totally valid, and it totally was, yeah. you automatically are going to have the people who are, well, they told me I was going to get it on May 15th, and it's May 18th, and I'm not getting it. I'm mad. I'm going to, you know. Whatever. You're gonna, you're gonna get it. Two kinds of people: the it's about freaking time people, and the oh, awesome job! I, this is so awesome. Thank you, guys. People, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I don't know how many. I don't. I don't know who wins that one. I don't know oh. which one there's, so there's more of. There's also these people that that completely don't understand the module system. You know, or, or right, what yeah. what we're yeah. delivering. I just I just watched a video. I don't even remember the guy's name. I never heard of him before, but apparently he's a. Um, a YouTuber that reviews games and he was mad, you know, because it's, oh man, this is just dog fighting. This is crap. I'm like, did you not read any, read? Read? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any level of basic information? It's yeah. it set your expectations. You, you, the information's there. And the problem is people are expecting more than what they're getting because they're looking at the finish line rather than the start line. Cause this is where we start. And this is where they're going to make the game better from this point based on our feedback. So let's get over that. Uh, let's get past the starting point. Then make your final decision when the game is done. Not base it off of a module that just got released. It's, it's impractical. The same thing also, it's the same all thing also when people comparing it to Elite Dangerous. I mean, yes. That's, yes. A, that's a really cool game. But these, you know, the two games are at two different stages in their life cycle. And yeah. people are all... You know, up in arms, you know, well, Elite Dangerous has, like, all sorts of, uh, you know, galaxy traveling and stuff like that already. You know, why don't you have that already? And it's like, no, I well, like a year of development before, right. before Star Citizen started, yeah. right? They've had, they've had a good yeah. 12 to 6 to 12 months to, to fine-tune everything. And we're, yeah. we're, we're in the we're just now starting to tune everything phase. Yeah. So. Well, we're just even in play now. <laughs> Well, yeah, and yeah. even then, they didn't even have the people that they wanted at their facilities because they got screwed in Austin for so long. I mean, come sure, on. They had a problem there. They, they couldn't, they couldn't uh, rent a space because they were a new company, you know, and people yeah. didn't understand the whole crowdfunding thing. And, you know, uh, it was really hard for them to actually get a, a space. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and, and when we talked to Ben, uh, I don't know, a few months ago, uh, at the start of season two, I think, or. Yeah, season two, we, we, we talked with Ben and Sandy. One of the questions I asked, and I think that it's now more relevant than ever, is going with crowdfunding, how do you handle the people who feel like they're now entitled? They're owners. They feel that way. Even though they're not, they're not entitled. They're not owners. They have that feeling because they put money behind this that they have a stake. They have a share in this company. And the success of this game is dependent upon them, not the company. And... That that's always been my fear, how to handle that, and they very delicately danced around that question, and I, I can't blame them because the, the the answers are not always good. But it's, it's a not a scary. black and white situation, though. right? Yeah, and you can't always give a straight answer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you want people to feel uh, invested, right? Right. Yes. You want. I mean, you know, we use the world word in, entitlement, right? But. Um, you know, and in some ways, you know, I, you know, you want people to feel entitled to something because they're in, they're they're trying to put not only their money but their time and their interest, and uh, which is it's so so hard to get nowadays because there's so many games out there, right? 
So you do want people to somewhat feel entitled, but you want them to feel entitled in a way that you can actually deliver on, not, right. you know, that, you know, give me random free crap kind of a thing, right? Mm-hmm. You want them to say, you know, I want you to give me the awesomest game ever, and then you give it to them, you know, and, and then that's a great transaction, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. But well, what, what's that saying where you can either get it fast and uh, fast and crappy service or whatever, you know, we could take our time and it'd be quality work. And that's how this is. They're going to take their time, and I'd rather have that and have quality. End of story. Yeah. And um, it's, it's the triangle, right? You can, it's, it's uh, speed, money, and quality, and you have to pick two, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yep. yeah. So we we've talked a little bit about some you know some some of the negatives. I mean they're they're there. It's it's alpha. It wasn't the smoothest launch in the history of of, of all things, but some it of the runs. positives <laughs> stable ish. I mean it's I, I haven't yep. had any crashes. I've had disconnections. We've all had that, but I haven't had any crashes. Um, I think that um, which which map do you guys like better the 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 asteroidy space one with the lasers or do you like the the one with the sun i can't remember their names because that would be the smart thing to do and i can't ever do that like, broken like moon dying is star the, and dying something yeah like something that. Yeah. yeah i think i think dying star i mean i really like the effects but it's really mm-hmm. hard to see like i've i've it run is. into the space station there a couple of times because it is it's like really bright this yeah. way but then you turn the other way and it's just like pitch black dark jj abrams isn't that <laughs> i know right no. Jeez. um I, I i think the i think the star one is my favorite by far it's yeah. the 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 one with the planet and the the mining lasers I, oh Those are yeah, there's just by the way yeah there's so much there's so much going on on that map and i feel like the, the the space in which you are in is so confined yes. that I feel like I'm constantly bumping into things or the edge of the map. Which, by the way, the enemies seem to have no problem with flying outside of. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but, uh, I, I, actually, I actually kind of like the, uh, the the terraforming lasers or whatever because they're mm-hmm. um, if you actually engage Vandul around there, you can you can kind of do like some weird maneuvers, you know, where they're they're trying to get around and shoot at you, but you can kind of try and get out of their line of fire by going around the laser and stuff like that. So it, it now, makes I haven't, been, I haven't been crazy enough to try it, but if, do you get blown up if you fly into the laser? Yes. Yes. I tried it. <laughs> sort of, it. It does the, it does the fly forward and you're dead thing, you know, when you like fly uh, out of the zone, but it does that on the laser. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I, I think oh, ahead, I, sorry. I did an EVA into the laser and didn't die, but I might be mistaken on it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was flying the, I believe the, um, the three hundred I, which I think has the best cockpit. Just it is, it is pure glass. It is there's, there's nothing really obstructing the view. And um, one bug that I found that I just thought was awesome, my entire ship got destroyed except for my cockpit. So I, so I had a completely non-maneuverable cockpit, just kind of you know just chilling in space. And I was like, this is really cool. Like, I'm really loving the damage effects. And you really feel that when your engines get hit, you take that maneuverability hit. And I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I've, I had the same thing where I, uh, I got part of my wing taken off and then I, I, try, I couldn't maneuver. And so I, I slammed into a wall right on just the cockpit came off. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, I, yeah, but I, I, uh, I, I had a bunch of them too where like, all of my weapons are knocked out, right? And I've got like one thruster. I can kind of rotate a little bit, you know, and then you pretty much have to eject at that point. Right? Yeah. That's that's yeah, the worst a- thing to hear too, man. Weapon system offline. It's like, well, yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, I actually had Man's a well- where, where yep. I lost my rear engine. Then I was trying to maneuver and then I hit an asteroid and it's like weapon offline. I'm like, oh, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> So, how far have you guys gotten? I think I, I think Brandon, you said eight. Bobby, yeah. you said eight. Ken, shout out. How far have you gotten? Seven or eight or something like that. I, I, I haven't really put enough time to try and advance it, but it's something like that. I've gotten past the second uh, the second triple wave thing, the second boss. Yeah, I yeah. think I got to eight or nine as well. I think that's probably where a lot of people. I mean, based on based on random sample size of four. I think a lot of people are kind of uh, getting stuck at eight. Um, and it's not stuck so much as it is. It really kind of becomes a time commitment. I think at wave mm-hmm. eight, I, in that eight to nine period, I was in, I was at 30 minutes probably. And um, you, end up, you end up with like six or eight or something like that. 
enemies at that point, right? And mm-hmm. those enemies also quickly dispatch your wingmen too if you're not really yep. getting on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I love that because because you're you're exactly right. The AI isn't unintelligent. They they definitely fly in formations. I, I definitely would see them kind of grouped up together. Um, but they are not the most resilient. I was kind of shocked that my Aurora was holding up a lot better than the Hornets that they were in. I don't know if they were getting more damage done or or what, but they weren't. Um, while they were doing very intelligent things, they weren't the most survivable. <laughs> I found that I was running out of ammo because the, the weapons that I have, like the lasers, didn't seem to do that much damage. But like the miniguns on the Hornet and the missiles, oh my God, those are freaking amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was running out of ammo and it's like, well, I'm out of ammo. Now all I have is lasers. Okay, it takes 20 minutes to kill something because either I suck or the weapons suck. And at well, that see, point, I, it's like, you know... Uh, yeah, so you have to the- really ration it in those, like, three three level chunks, you know, before you get to reload yeah. again. It's a, it's, well, did, it's wasn't you hard. saying that the Aurora has a that's, more consistent yeah, that's, hit damage? Yeah, that's, what, that's, that's kind of the thing. that I'm, Now, maybe it was because at the point that I had played the Aurora... I was actually f- starting to figure out how to control it properly, and I and I ended up going with the 360 controller pad. I was starting to figure out my, my, my jive with it. And I was like, I think these need to be balanced better. Either I'm getting really good, or these damn Aurora lasers are kicking so, ass. Well, they, said, they said on Wingman Tanger that they bumped up the missile damage on the Aurora because the Aurora had fewer missiles. And mm-hmm. uh, from, I've watched quite a few hours of streaming, too. I haven't played a lot in the Aurora, but... Uh, from what I can tell, yeah, those are much more powerful lasers than than the the Hornets ball turret rate lasers. Yeah, and and maybe that's the way it's designed to be because with with that Hornet you have that flexibility of single fire or dual firing, both of your banks. So I'm assuming right. if you're dual firing, you're probably going to do more damage than the the, we- the weapons on the uh, Aurora. But at maybe when you're just doing the single fire, you know, either your your, your rail guns or your not rail guns the Gatling, whatever. When you're firing one set of weapons or the other, maybe that single damage isn't there. But um, I just kind of felt like the recharge time, recharge time, and the overall damage output from the Aurora, it just felt higher to me. Again, it could have just been my comfort level at that point. But um, are, you, are, I you guys, are you guys getting comfortable with the whole decoupling thing? No. Uh, are you talking about fly by wire? No, the uh, uh, decoupled mode where you. Uh, you cut your main engine and you use your whole ship like a like a turret, basically. No. So I didn't. On, on on mouse and keyboard, it's the caps lock key, and mm-hmm. so when you hit the caps lock key, you go into decoupled mode, and your main engine stops firing. Only maneuvers will maneuvering jets yep. will fire, and, and then so you'll, you'll keep do this. your yeah yeah you'll you'll keep your your current vector that you were on before you hit decoupled, and then you, but you can still move your ship right. So the uh, the way that I usually approach combat is I I, I try I, I try and uh, you know approach the enemy you know use my afterburners get to close range and then get myself on a safe vector I'm not going to hit an asteroid on or whatever hit decoupled and then use the whole ship like a turret like this and it's a lot yeah. easier uh-huh. to aim. Well, I've been wanting to do that with the X52. The only problem is is it because you cannot remap the keys. There's no option to do it on the keyboard. You have to go, or excuse me, on the joystick. You have to go to the keyboard. There's no decouple button? Nope. There's no decouple button. So that's the only thing on why I haven't been playing as much, because I don't want to get too used to the keyboard and mouse when I know I want to make the joystick my bread and butter. So, but yeah, I enjoyed it when I gave it a shot. It was very interesting, and it was uh, something that... Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're going to have a hybrid mode as well, right? Where you're going to be able to do the strafing in the Z-axis yeah. like that? So apparently those are programmable things. They're just not mapped. And so okay. they were, oh. they were, somebody was commenting on the forum, forums about some... You can download uh, alternative HOTAS files files yep. that they have on the forums now. I think yep. one of those had some other strafing maneuvers in it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't... You know, I don't know what, how how that actually works with the setup, or, or how you act, how you would actually control like vertical strafing and things like that. Uh, I I have a hat movement on the throttle actually, and other games like Babylon Five, I found her. Uh, I would use that as what I would use for my strafing for the Z axis, and that actually made it a lot easier. So, yeah, um, one of one of my uh, kind of weird things I'm just not used to. Uh, when playing with the 360 controller, which unfortunately right now may be the way I end up going, 
I'm so tempted to use that uh, that right hand thumbstick, and that is your your field of you know where you're actually looking. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, I have to like I almost wanted to break my thumb, stop hitting that damn button. <laughs> I don't need to use that. And I just if I keep my 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 line of sight straight on with my turret, I felt I felt like I was doing substantially better. Now I had to be a lot more aggressive in my play style. I mean, I really had to get up in their business uh, to to get anything done, but. Mm-hmm. I, it's, like it's just so in order to actually be competitive, you're probably going to need to learn how to use that right, right stick, though. You know. Well, yeah. I don't know. Have, have you tried and, using and, your and, Oculus Rift? I am not touching the Oculus until my second generation comes in, which should okay. be coming in this month. It's I, I do not know how anybody is playing with a Gen One Oculus with any visual fidelity at all. I mean, chips are not can't possibly look good with it. So <laughs> blobs, blob targets. Yeah, it, it's it's it's. Uh, I love it. I love the technology. I mean, we we, we had a whole episode where we talked about the Oculus Rift, but uh, at this point, I'm going to say it completely unplayable with Oculus Rift from from what I need in my games to be playable. It's unplayable. I'm sure people are saying, oh, no, you're retarded. It's amazing. You should use it. But (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, not for me. It's I I can't look at the world. You want 3D, not 2D sprites. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I want something that looks like (laughs) it's being played on a PC, not a uh, PS2. So, okay. It would be cool to know if the if the the head tracking though is working well, you know, for targeting in the Oculus Rift already. I think I'll give it a shot tonight if I can get logged into the hangar. I'll give it a shot and see. I've had a lot of problems with the Oculus Rift integration in the hangar module. I know in the patch before this, they patched it in where it should just be as simple as pressing number one on your number pad to enable it. I'm yet to actually have it work successfully unless I go in and modify the configuration file, which I have to do anyway to get my ships to show up. Uh, because of the the quantity of them. And speaking of, I haven't done that yet. Have you guys seen anything other than the Aurora, the the Hornet, um, you know, the the what is it, the Freelancer? What else is in there? I'm trying to think. Have, the, I guess what I'm asking the best the best way to ask this is the Constellation and um, the uh, the pirate ship. God, my, my uh, words. Cutlass. 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 Oh. Are they in there? And if they're in there. Have they had their uh, their repass with the? What they've had a, is English? They've today? had a PBR pass. PBR, there mm-hmm. we go. And uh, or PBS, and uh, it's it's not as it's not as dramatic as the freelancer, but it, it's interesting. Like the the lighting inside of the Cutlass is kind of cool now, and um, they they did there's a bunch of texturing, but. I don't think that's the lighting, especially on the outside and, and a couple of the other lights is quite done yet because it kind of looks a little weird. Um, everything looks a little bit flatter than it probably should in the Cutlass. On the um, Constellation, it, it has some good parts. Um, and like It's uh, also a darker of- color for the hull. Yeah. And there's red lights inside of it now and a couple of other things. So it got a reasonable pass. Does it? Yeah, do I, they I, look I, as they're, shiny? They're like the whole redesign on that ship, though. So I doubt they put too much effort into the constant. Right. Well, one of my complaints with the PBR pass on the freelancers, to me, it looks way too shiny. Like it is, like like whoa, it looks shiny. It looks like an old school, like you know, seven fifty seven kind of like passenger liner plating kind of stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it reminds me of, of the old American Airlines before they changed their their livery, where it was just the the aluminum hull. Of, of the jetliner and I'm like gosh this thing is bright like I mean the, the lights when it would hit it just right you would almost get the J.J. Abrams blinding lens flare <laughs> but um, the rest of the ships I think look amazing that's the only one that I think that I saw in game that I kind of was like oh, I, don't know if I, really I like how they it. changed the inside of the Freelancer though how they added the extra door like the, oh, the yeah. decompression compartment yeah. or whatever you know that was pretty cool that's really awesome I, I, I like the Freelancer look I kind of wonder what it would look like with them um, with skins on it now and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And uh, but the uh, the uh, the variants are going to be coming out pretty soon, and uh, um, I've heard good things. So um, no, can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we had a lot of community questions about this, so I figured out if if they're being asked in our community, it's probably being asked by some of the more casual players as well um, about. If you have beta access, so you missed alpha access, but you have beta access, do you have access to Arena Commander? And the answer to that question is no. You have to have alpha access or the Arena Commander pass. Okay. So, And you also have to have a ship package purchased. So you can't just buy the Arena pass and do 
you know, and, and do dogfighting. So you have to have any ship purchase, the, any ship purchase and the arena pass if you don't have alpha access to play the game. So just kind of a, if you're like 30, 35 bucks plus the $5 pass or something like that, just bare minimum. Yeah. 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 So, yep. and it's definitely worth it. I mean, yeah, it's buggy right now and it's going to be, but it is, you know, so that, get your practice in. That should cover, I mean, the way that, the way that it's pitched, I think that pass covers arena commander one, two and three. So you get mm-hmm. all of the cool stuff into like the Idris boarding and stuff like that. Now it doesn't, they made, they made it sound like there's like an FPS module. Um, mm-hmm. but it's really unclear whether that's a separate thing or whether that will be the count as part of Arena Commander 2. But so the, you can quite a bit for five bucks if you haven't, you know, if you don't already have access there. Now the FPS module, is that going to be separate from planet side or is that planet side? No, no, that's going to be ship to ship. That's going to be boarding and whatnot. That's going to be well, taking yeah. place in Arena Commander. So, so they, they've listed two different things as far as FPSs. Mm-hmm. So there's the board the Idris thing, and that's what I guess what you're talking about, right? Yes. And, and so that that's that's the whole ship to ship, and you're trying to try to capture Idris and stuff like that. But they also have yes. another FPS thing they've talked about the uh, the Shuban mining station they're making for mm-hmm. Squadron Forty Two. They were talking about it for a while, uh, releasing that as, an, as just an FPS map for yes. balancing FPS and stuff. And that was going to be the FPS module. Um, yep. I don't know if. Again, whether that's something that's, again, tacked onto Arena Commander or whether that'll be like a separate thing. The, well, the board is Arena Commander, but... Yeah, the, the, as far as I understand, the Idris is going to be a part... The Idris boarding is going to be a part of the Arena Commander, but the planet or the asteroid module is going to be uh, separate from that, as far as I understand it. So you may... If, if you really want access to that, that may be another five bucks down the line. We don't know. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, I, and I hate to say it, but five dollars at this point for a game of this quality, pretty cheap. <laughs> and, and the beta, the beta access that you get with that, I believe that includes, uh, uh, you know, all the all the persistent universe and all the other yes. stuff down the line. So that's that's worth quite a bit right there, and that'll eventually yeah. go away probably too. Yeah, I mean, in that you know, future packages might not have that. As <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, before we start wrapping up, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh, yeah, we had the uh, we had some information sent to us about s- tournaments and stuff coming up from Star Citizen Base. Uh, we were contacted by Prospero over there, or Prosper Zero. I, I don't exactly know if that's an O or a Zero. Uh, but they were saying that uh, they're going to start working on creating a tournament system for dogfighting. And maybe even the the PU, the Persistent Universe, uh, just trying to set up ladders and things like that for people having competitions and, and things like that. So we wanted to let folks know about that. You can see some more information about that over at StarCitizenBase.com slash arena. So check it out. Brandon, you have anything? No, I'm all good. All right, Ken Shadow, where can people find you, and do you have anything else that uh, you feel would be interesting to talk about? Um, as far as finding me, I'm, I'm Ken Shadow in most places, uh, Twitter, Twitch, those kinds of things. Um, I have a pirate blog, uh, <laughs> you know, just whatever things of interest for my pirating ways. Uh, at, uh, we call Dread. them humanitarian ways <laughs> on our show. <laughs> In, in, involuntary economic relief, you know. Exactly. Yeah, that works. That works. <laughs> and, and it, and I have a blog at uh, dreadcitizen.com. I have an article over there that has some behind the scenes photos of the latest Wingman's Hangar if you're interested. Um, and then the um, uh, same thing on YouTube. A lot of my videos are on YouTube under Dread Citizen. Um, as far as anything else to share, I don't. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, uh, we de- I definitely appreciate you all coming on tonight. And I definitely, again, Ken Shadow, thanks for joining us tonight. It was a real pleasure to have you on. It was fun. All right. Well, um, this is Thomas. I'm signing out. Adios, everybody. <laughs>